sir shall we start sir yes sir yeah so let me introduce you to the students then you will uh, start your lecture sir okay so good afternoon to everyone i welcome all of you to the third, third lecture in the lecture series in nonlinear dynamics conducted by the department of nonlinear dynamics bharti dasan university with the support from rusa 2.0 It is my pleasure to introduce you today's speaker, Dr. Tapas Sin from Indian Institute of Information Technology, or people commonly call it as Triple IT, Kanji Pram. Dr. Tapas Sin completed his PhD in Vishwa Bharati, Santini Ketan, West Bengal. He carried out his postdoctoral studies about two years at Saga Institute of Nuclear Physics, Kolkata, and then he continued his postdoctoral studies. in university of barcelona spain and texas university united states of america before joining the present institute his research interests are dynamics of anharmonic oscillators supersymmetric quantum mechanics giant resonances of nuclei and properties of hot nuclei as i pointed out pointed out dr tapas sil not only specialized in nonlinear dynamics but also works in theoretical nuclear physics so on may see he also publishes research works in nuclear physics as well with this short introduction now i hand over the session to dr tapas sir over to you sir thank you thank you very much sir for uh, your kind introduction and uh, kind words and of course inviting me and giving me opportunity to uh, you know uh, discuss uh, with uh, your student and people uh, so uh let me start my presentation yes yes here let me yes. just present my screen okay sir yes, uh, yes, is it visible yes, yes okay yes okay so uh, the title means uh, title of today's uh, discussion or you can say talk whatever it is that is study of strongly nonlinear oscillator using improved homotopy perturbation method uh, so let me just start uh, straight away just uh, oscillating system no point of saying that it is very important everybody knows that uh, study of oscillation is a very big uh, branch of uh, you know research so people lot of people are engaged in that and here uh, main thing is that most of the cases we deal with the uh, simple harmonic motion but uh, you can see some cases you have started with you know very well this part also that uh, uh, whenever i am to considering simple pendulum if i just have a uh, small angle approximation then only i am getting simple harmonic motion otherwise this non linear term will be dipping into the equation governing equation and problem comes there so we'll be having uh, difficulty in solution or getting exact solution of course always a very correct result so <clears throat> there are a lot of methods to handle such kind of problem there are perturbative and non perturbative but usually people uh, go for uh, perturbation theory it is old and well tested and uh, we can see that uh, perturbation method means you will be having a perturbing term so the solution we are writing exactly solvable part and something which is perturbation to that that means that anharmonic is coming where from so that part we are taking it and we expand it in terms of that para anharmonic parameter so anharmonicity parameter if it is very large then this expansion sometimes fails so we perturbation theory will not give you very reliable result in those cases so again lot of other methods people approach people have used that is perturbative and non perturbative both and uh, some of them are really working excellent way 
here the getting new medical solution suppose some problem is given some time will be very comfortable to solve it numerically and get the result but uh, many cases people will be preferred uh, to have analytical expression that means some approximation solution so this is also a very good effort uh, of, uh, is going on this side also so <clears throat> Actually, in 1999, when it's around 2000, you can see J.H. He, he introduced homotopy concept in perturbation method. So what is that in brief, I'll be telling. A lot of work is done in that. But uh, something, let me just brief it. So homotopy perturbation method means I'm having some nonlinear equation. So for example, N is the nonlinear operator of second order with some uh, some kind of this uh, initial condition so it is starting the system is starting from amplitude that is what is the initial condition now homotopy is constructed we construct the homotopy in this format so you can see here this is your nonlinear part and here i am putting some parameter p here I am putting, I am just operating, taking an operator which is exactly solvable linear operator. So in this case, if you take second order, you are taking the second order term here. So mainly we take here the d2, dt2 plus omega square. That operator will be this one. And here this parameter, embedding parameter, it is the homotopy means you can see that I am deforming the equation basically. How I am deforming? I am putting this p here and p here. So p, if it is, it is running from zero to one, so if you can see if it is zero, then I will be getting this term zero, and here I'll be getting exactly solvable problem. And if it is one, then you can see this term will be zero, and you'll be getting back your own problem here. This problem will be getting back. So people just this is the uh, advantage people take so people just expand in terms of p which is assumed to be small and finally they put p tends to be one and get the solution so this is the expansion they are taking instead instead of this uh, anharmonicity parameter or perturbatic perturbation parameter here we are considering or a, a homotopy in homotopy we are considering p so Whenever a problem is given in perturbation, the parameter, you cannot do anything with that. It is given already. But in this case, whatever it is, you can just uh, use this P, which is very small, and this expansion is all, always very, very much valid. So this is the advantage of uh, adapting homotopy. Now, if you just put this equation, this equation back to this equation, this homotopy, that equation, then you will be getting an, uh, a recursion relation, equating the p power of p, which p power of p is to the power zero. If you consider those term, you club it here, so you'll be getting this one. p to the power one, that means p is coefficient. If you collect, that will be put to zero, so it will be giving you this one. Similarly, you will be getting recursion relation. So this way, you are going to 0th order, 1st order, 2nd order term. Now, after getting this thing, you solve this equation and get x0, x1, x2, and put that p is equal to 1, and that is your solution, approximate solution. So this is the... Uh, scheme basically people use it now abu transform homotopy perturbation method that is what we just uh, uh, worked on so abu transform i'm just telling at the beginning itself it is very similar to uh, our laplace equation laplace transform so that uh, they have just put it somewhere but i don't find there is very uh, big merit over the Laplace transform. So later part of our work, 
we have uh, uh, we have changed ourselves from Abu transform to Laplace. So what happened? You see here, I am having that uh, homotopy perturbation, whatever is there, and Abu transformation I have given. What is the advantage for that? Advantage for that is you can just take it Abu transform and inverse out Abu transform as it is done in Laplace equation. So in sorry, instead of solving that differential equation in this recursion relation, now we'll be get, getting the some algebraic equation. So it will be easier to solve the problem. So that is the basic advantage. But accuracy or some other way, it should not give any advantage. This is the only advantage to simplify the uh, calculation. And here, this is the Abu transformation. Basically, it is in this paper, 2013, Abu he just proposed. Uh, but application-wise, homotopy application, you can just say HPM application. So we actually uh, came across some papers, and we found that there are different, uh, especially for mechanical system, uh, mechanical engineers, they uh, deal with different equations of complex. Now, if we combine together, we are getting this kind of equation. Just we combine. We just propose to construct this equation, differential equation. Looks a bit uh, difficult to solve, definitely. So what we did, this general equation, we just tried to use that homotopy, uh, AT, HPM, whatever we discussed. And with the gauge value, A cos omega t, because I know this is the oscillatory thing, so that D operator, capital D operator, if you take that solution will be this type. So I am just taking that, starting with, and that is the zeroth order means, I'll be getting that equation only. Now x1, if you go for the first order approximation, you are getting this, uh, this relation from the first order approximation. But here, that recursion relation, whenever it is giving, you can see here one term is there, which is E sine omega t. So this is a secular term. So as t goes to infinity, it will be going to infinity. So that we must cut here. So that removing of removal of secular equation will give you something. It is not uh, uh, in vain. It will give you basically sequence from here. If you put this this coefficient part, this coefficient part zero, first line that is zero, that will give you omega. And if you just remaining part, that will be added with x zero term will give you the final solution. So it is, you see, analytical expression, not very big. It is uh, to some extent very handy. And we can see that, uh, how it will be accurate or, or how it will compare with other methods that we'll check. But uh, before that, let me just see some application. So now this equation eight, whatever I told that we just wrote this thing in a combined manner. So in different cases, it will be giving you different type of oscillation. And that is very much important. One is that or Sir uh, Professor Lachman and Sir, that uh, they have published one thing that long back, that uh, uh, Matthew Lachman oscillator. So if you check this parameters, if you put it this format, you'll be getting that that equation. Now, if you take another set of parameter, if you adjust it, you'll be getting this uh, rotating uh, parabola in a rotating par uh, sorry particle in a rotating parabola then this option will give you the vibration of tapered beam. So that is also people are using very much this one. Third is that, fourth is that, if you just consider this autonomous, this kind of solution, uh, uh, parameters, you'll be getting ACO or uh, autonomous conservative oscillator. So that equation is this one, final one. So you can see that uh, the solution previous, uh, uh, pay, uh, slide I have shown you that uh, that solution uh, is just same solution. If I just put these parameters, I'll be getting these parameters. I'll be getting the uh, solution for the particular cases. So this thing, uh, let us see one by one. 
So if I consider this was the solution, this was the equation, general equation, this was the solution. Now, if I just consider our, this parameter say. So here I am putting A2, A3, A4, A2, B2, all that zero, B1 minus plus K and B2, A1 plus minus K and lambda is equal to alpha square. If I put this, then you can see from this expression and this expression, sequence is giving this thing and that uh, displacement will be given by this one. Why? Because if you put this value, this other than this green part or zeroth order part, none will be there. Everything will be just zero. So this is the solution and this is uh, the same as given in that paper. So this is the first uh, test we have done. Secondly, let us just see that in NOFA later, actually they have done something, as I was, I was telling, there are different methods. One of the very much established thing is that energy balance, balance method. And another thing also they've used, sometimes frequency amplitude uh, formalism. So that, uh, that this FAB EBM, together this, they merged it, uh, in no follicle, and they studied the remaining four, three, para, three potential separately. So, uh, rotating parabola, if you consider that equation, if you put these parameter values and whatever they have taken the parameter, I am, I, we are also using that thing. You can see the parameter A or B, both cases, they are reasonably good. It seems to be they are reasonably good, and we are also matching. But here RK4, we are matching with RK4. And, um, but if you see here, some kind of deviation is there. So this will be very much understood if we consider the error graph. So error graph, if we plot, if we plot error, uh, that means how much deviation is there for the approximation method from RK4, RK4 uh, calculation or in this hall, you can just take anything. We have checked with both. It will be looking like that. So we can see our results are better than them. So it is fine that it is simple and it is accurate. If you see the expression, it is simple and it is accurate. Now, autonomous conservative, tapered beam if I if we did that give that uh, give us the same kind of result so tapered beam i'm not going to discuss main point is that whenever we are going to autonomous conservative system it is having fifth order of nonlinearity and some other terms also there so you can understand that uh, it is more complicated and in this case you see uh, for different parameter sets you can see from here itself that displacement curve itself we can see that uh, this uh, RK4, that means that uh, numerical result that is uh, standing aside, other two are going side by side. But even, so if I just, that is seen very clearly from the error graph, you can see here, initially it is a bit less, I know it is a bit less, but it is, I cannot be happy with this kind of error. So they are almost comparing, both are almost comparing. So we felt that uh, here uh, we need some uh, improvement, further improvement is required. So what we did, actually frequency plot gives us an, give us another, uh, another tool that definitely you can see for higher amplitude frequency is just getting off for rotating parabola as well as the conservative system uh, STO. So further improvement is required. That is the conclusion from here. We are better, somewhat better than FAB EBM, but we need to improve further. Now, what we did, we did two changes here. We have adopted that uh, uh, that uh, a converging control parameter here. Some parameter I have, we are just introducing here. We are adapting it here. And not only that, we are 
expansion of omega term that means frequency term that also we are just taking and uh, somewhat this kind of thing in ham with the uh, homotopy analysis method they have done this kind of thing especially this this uh, this uh, h inclusion of it but they have some other difficulty we may we may show you later on but thing is that the same uh, our aim is that we will be restoring the simplicity of perturbation theory that means hpm and some improvement on top of that that trade off we are trying to do it here so what we do finally we have just done this thing hpm plus this uh, lambda expansion lambda means this frequency term expansion then h expansion sorry h expansion na h we have kept it here and instead of abu now we are taking uh, lp uh, laplace transform it is you know just uh, Um, very standard. That's why we are just taking. So together, I'm just calling it as L H. Now this L H uh, here. One uh, problem is that I have to uh, find out this H convergence where it will be based. I have to find it out that way. So that for periodic motion, whenever you are having periodic motion, it is very nicely to work this with the square residual method. You know square residual method. Just it will be that uh, this uh, e that square residual I have to calculate, and then I have to minimize it with respect to h. So for what value this uh, this will be minimized? I have I I will be using that value for calculation of uh, our uh, x and omega. Okay, so this. Uh, <clears throat> with this uh, spirit let us just go and just apply it to graphing oscillator which is uh, simplest one and people just take it as a benchmark for testing the model so let me just take it here uh, where this is the thing we are just uh, we are just uh, taking this is the graphing oscillator simplest form and then uh, i'm just doing this thing now it will be explicitly seen that what i am doing this equation whatever is given that is ph i am just doing in case of uh, so ph i am just p and h i am multiplying there and here d i am just taking this uh, operator and exactly sol solvable problem so that i am just adding it with 1 minus p term so that is what we have done and then we have just uh, transformed Tau is equal to omega t. So here you can see this is the expansion. I will be taking it for lambda expansion, and we are getting finally this recursion relation. This is very simple steps. It is not very difficult one. One can get it very easily. Now Duffing oscillator. When we just first order, we have considered and we are looking at uh, that problem with respect to uh, our previous that Abu transform. From the homotopy method, A T now I am just telling. So we find that uh, this uh, frequency is this and x is this. So now if you plot it, you'll be getting much better result. So you can see that A T is having this much error and L H is almost negligible with respect to this. Why that uh, if you take that uh, that uh, maximum error or A T within this range, it is a uh, 10 to the power minus 6 order, and for LH it is 10 to the power minus 8 order. So it is 100 times better accuracy to do this. So one way we are getting bit confidence that it is giving better result also. Now another part that uh, uh, this is Newton uh, harmonic balance. Uh, our U uh, et al. They have just published in 2019, and uh, uh they if they in that paper they have given for the same system uh, time period and this time period you can see it is not so simple it is having uh, this this term within that again you are having this two term which is expressed this way i am just copy pasting this i just copy and paste it here so uh, this with this they got some result 
So I thought that, okay, we thought that oh, let us check with that also. So our ex from our expression, since they have taken second order, we have also taken second order here, second order calculation for LH. And this, uh, this was our, with our parameter, this was the expression. Here you can see not, nothing more than this. It is the only thing. And if I, in order to match with this notation, I'm just changing A here with capital A and beta to B and lambda to small a, small a here it is there. So this small a, it will be lambda here. And this a here will be capital A. So that way we match to that notation. And then whatever they have given some number, I we tried to uh, take it. This is the thing is that T approx divided by T exact. T exact, how they are calculating? They are calculating from the time period concept that you know that uh, uh, I'll come back. So uh, T1 to T2, they will integrate uh, V dx like that. So from there, V minus V dx. So from there, they will be just getting this time period. And uh, here, for different parameter set, they are giving, you see, T by T, sorry, T by T, T exact by T approx by T exact. For them, it is 0 0.999 this. We are a little bit better. It is not that, that much significant. When it is 0 0.5, we are getting, both are getting very exact up to this decimal, I'm pretty sure. And then when it is 500, that time they are stabilizing at lower, uh, lower uh, error. So you can see it is uh, here for C we have 21. So you can see that, and that basically after this, it is getting stabilized. So it will be stabilized to particular this value, error if you plot it. So here also we can say one way, numerically we are on par of SN2, but the advantage is that simplicity. You can see this is so simple expression, even second order, first order will be much simpler. So this is the take away from here that this the calculation is a bit simple and accurate also. Now autonomous case, if we just consider which was the problem there, where from we motivated to do this thing, that the solution if you take, it will be looking like this. This is also not that big solution here. Only here, this lambda one and lambda two will be having little bit this bigger expression. But still, it is tractable, I hope so. It is not very big in comparison to this equation itself. So uh, with this, let us see what was the improvement. So uh, actually, Hamiltonian technique that uh, Harman, uh, they just did something in 2014. And I, we tried to just uh, check it, how it compares with that. So you can see here, again, error. We are much better. Even a, a just simple homotopy or ATHPM and LH, both first order is giving much better result than them. And if it is this is this parameter values are very low. If you go for large parameter values, so one and other OP means other parameter. Other means you can see there all these parameters are there. No, so you can see this uh, lambda, epsilon alpha, beta, gamma. So all these things, uh, when say we are guiding one parameter that we are naming that whether alpha or beta or gamma or amplitude and OP means other parameters to all are taken the same value like that uh, to just clarify that uh, notation. So if we take that larger uh, parameter values, so you can see a really wide variation and you can see that graph, if you see even our, that uh, ATHPM is not good here. It is almost going uh, close to the, uh, that uh, uh, Hamiltonian technique network. So <clears throat> here again, we find that uh, our LH is doing very well, 
but there is still room you can see here it is some little bit of undulation is there that means it is started changing little bit and frequency plot indicates yeah for larger a it is just getting deviated almost it is matching there it is almost there till uh, 0.6 even for here up to this after that it is started deviating from the rk4 or exact value you can just say for that now phase diagram if i just see uh, we are we are just comparing with rk4 and for this it is uh, just uh, one stable equilibrium i am having it here and this one equilibrium point and you can see i am varying it here amplitude amplitude 0.2 this one amplitude 0.5 this one and amplitude 1 it is the outer ring and here op other parameters i have kept we have kept it here one so you can see that uh, whenever amplitude is small it is matching with rk4 our uh, lh curve but whenever it is larger larger uh, amplitude then some deviation is here it is getting the bit prolapsed further uh, so that prolapsed part that you can see that the prolapsed part part is not getting that much so we are just underestimating that portion now if you check uh, another way we tried that uh, variation a we have fixed it one and other parameters we are just varying 0 0.2 0 0.5 0 0.6 you can see that uh, here also some gaps are there so it is not matching uh, for the larger value that uh, smaller value it is matching nicely so lh2 if i go this is the first order second order if i go you can see it is matching very nicely here it, it, it has almost come down to the uh, to the line of rk4 so uh, we can say other way that uh, that uh, even that uh, this property is just getting uh, well reproduced by our approximation method. So we can uh, we can just get more confidence about our method. Now, error if I just consider, you see um, uh, here, if we just consider the error, RMS error, RMS error, what we did, we calculated up to 20. So these plots we have given up to 20. Just you see this plot I, we have given up to 20 so up to 20 we can go further also that is not a problem so up to 20 somewhere we have to stop so that's why up to 20 we have just taken this portion and we have just taken that uh, this plot so if you see here i am just varying amplitude for op other parameter i have kept it fixed 0.8 you can see lh is very good here and after 0.5 or so, the AT and HT, they are deviating very, very large. And they are just going, shooting it up almost. Now, other way, if you see that uh, I'm varying OP, only LH calculation, no other comparison, only LH calculation, only I'm just varying the OP. It is obvious that lower OP will be giving you better result and larger op so i am just giving a limit that 1.5 if i take op then it is getting very much this is getting very worse around 2 so it is around 2 amplitude 2 so you can see here it is started deviating very much with increasing op so that is very much understood it is it is we can understand this thing easily it is no surprise Another thing is that uh, now we are varying all the parameters separately, like here, alpha variation we are doing. And here we are varying for different, uh, these curves, different curves will be, uh, will be um, corresponding to different amplitude. So smaller amplitude to larger amplitude it will take. And alpha only will be varying, OP is 0.7. So if in that case, you see, again, it is just increasing for larger value of OP. It is increasing. Smaller value means 0.8 up to 0.8. It is just not that much. After 0.8, it, it is just, you see, very uh, much, you know, sensitive in that case. So it is just, uh, uh, just going 
high very fast and uh, it is increasing way that is happening but one more thing if you see just beta variation we have seen nice thing that uh, here beta once you fix a for any curve if you see any a if you fix then this is almost flat so there is it is not that much sensitive uh, beta is not that much sensitive beta means x t term in this case then if you consider this uh, gamma that is also the same thing you see they are not very sensitive especially uh, below 0.8 or 0.8 below you can see there it is almost insensitive here little bit undulation is there but you can say it is not that much so this two thing is very actually different again if you see the epsilon this part this part uh, if you see that that parameter also having a uh, similar nature of this alpha variation so you can see this uh, from here we have got some idea at what region our method is doing well at what region we cannot be that much uh very we cannot say that that this is very good or something that uh, range we know our limitation so with this we are just uh, try to understand our limitation but if we just compare with ht just to numerically suppose here something is there so numerically if you see here uh, lower point we see that ht we are having 10 to the power minus 5 and here 10 to the power 8 for us la and for ht it is 10 to the minus 5 and if you take this is for larger value 1 1 op1 and a1 you can see here ht is 10 to the power minus 1 that means 0.22 and here we are having 10 to the power minus 2 so uh, at least one order of magnitude we are better than them uh, that is for sure okay so this is to get some numerical uh, quantitative idea for uh, further improvement we thought that okay let us see what way we can do it further improvement what we tried this is uh, h also will expand it h also will expand it in, in terms of p to the power n minus 1 so that way if you just do it actually lh plus h expansion we have considered now if we just we just add up uh, applied it for polynomial restoring forces cases and we generalize polynomial potential uh, uh, restoring force up to fifth order we have just considered and studied different cases here so here one thing is there we have to deal with asymmetric potential so uh, for example if it is say x square term is there only then it is asymmetric so in that case potential will be deformed like that you know very well and uh, i we are just defining now this gauge solution instead of a cos omega t i am just adding beta also here where this uh, beta is the asymmetry part so L R, you can see A R this one. So uh, sorry, sorry. So from here, this is the A R, and this portion is A L. So this is plus, and this is minus part. So this would be actually minus effectively, and this is the average amplitude because this plus this divided by two that would be average amplitude. So this is what will be our way to do. So again with this. Let us just start, uh, we just have done uh, for the, actually we got the general solution of this and we are just putting these values here, D1, D2, this case we are taking and LHH solution. Now we are telling it is LHH with H expansion, LH with H expansion. So this solution also is not very big and we are having the first order solution like this asymmetric case we will be having some exact result so this exact result we are having it here from uh, from a 2006 paper of who 
uh, that is uh, sound and vibration that uh, journal it is published. So this exact result, whatever is there, we have the privilege to compare with that. So opportunity to do that. So that's what if we just do, we can see that LH H2, if I one, if I take it here for asymmetric case, it is still have a thing. So I am just considering exact RK4. Uh, exact and RK4, they'll be same that just to, you know, get confidence that RK4, uh, that mesh size and calculation is fine. Uh, in fact, we have done it. We have checked it, the uh, convergence of that uh, RK4 solution. And we have seen that it is really stabilized with respect to the mesh size, whatever we have taken. So that if we do, you can see the second order calculation is non-trivial, of course, such cases, asymmetric cases. And uh, you, if we do first order, we'll be getting something, but second order is giving us really very good result. So this thing we are just um, getting for the asymmetric case. In asymmetric case, we have just uh, called that uh, LH1 and LH, LH2. LHH2, that means second order calculation, if I do, we'll be getting again, second order is much better. And uh, here, uh, this is getting worse. Actually, if you see here that, uh, that uh, our calculation is getting worse whenever we are going, approaching towards some unstable point. So here, you, say, you see it is point, uh, 0.5 or something will be there. So uh, that average one, something. So once it will be approaching towards this direction, it will be, will be getting more and more error here. So, <clears throat> so that is what we have to be careful about asymmetric part. But asymmetric potential case or asymmetric system, it is always uh, tricky to get a, uh, very highly accurate solution that is always true. So we are just uh, uh, in these cases we find that in uh, NH2 that second order solution is required. It is not a trivial thing. So we have to go for second order case. Now <clears throat> for this case, what we have done, we have just checked with uh, different cases. We may avoid this thing. The same thing of course. So uh, with different uh, different uh, AM, AM means this is maximum AM is here 1.2, AM means the maximum average amplitude, that is 0 0.72 will be for this case. For this case, if you take this uh, B2 parameter, uh, if I plot it or if I just see the maximum minima for the potential of with B2 parameter and B1 is equal to 1, We'll be getting different these points, right? These points will be getting, and from there we are deciding that AM will be what maximum amplitude, what can be given, AR, AL. So from here you can see this one. So here basically we are always finding, as I was telling, that our input is this, but finally that it is so that it will be reaching the maximum. So whenever it is reaching this maximum value then I am getting very worse result. Here that the result is getting worse. But in this range, result is very good. You can see it is matching with exact. Uh, RK4 also always matching. So that is just to check RK4 is fine. But here you can see we are just getting worse than them. So this part we have to deal with differently. And uh, we have to do something else maybe. But so far, whatever we have done, it is reasonably good. It's not that bad, uh, you know, but uh, somehow we need to improve it further. That is, I understand here. So uh, this is the error. You can see that uh, if you just go to the larger amplitude, uh, maximum amplitude, larger value of B and A, you will be getting window less. So this, this this window will be less. So you will be not getting a lot of uh, room to you know, play with the parameter. So that is what is the restricted parameter you can just take. It. 
other than that it will be not confined now just okay now uh, just symmetric part if i just consider this thing that cubic and uh, fifth power if i have it here it is a symmetric potential and in that case we just uh, get solution very easily i am just going to the result first solution that uh, will be very easily and uh, you can see that uh, uh, in this case that uh, cubic one uh, cubic force if you just take b is equal to 0 if you put from that solution you are getting duffing equation this purpose is to compare with this uh, madani et al that uh, 2011 some paper was there and what they have done they have given the frequency this is the frequency the method they have done they have just taken the laplace uh, homotopy and uh, laplace plus homotopy they have taken and then uh, we are comparing with this and here exact result exact frequency is calculated from this uh, turning point consideration so uh, the rms error if you see here can see here that uh, this is almost same but uh, whenever again you can see that error is much much less here so it is 10 and here it is 0.6 so it is again 100 times better we are getting with this method so uh, this symmetric method another term that let us just consider that another case that is that uh, fifth order for uh, that polynomial if I just consider and here we got different results from different uh, approach so that is that was interesting to uh, compare so you can see here EBM one is the very popular in in, in this business so this EBM method uh, people have done that ME as we, as I was telling that variational method coupled with homotopy max mean approach then some improved perturbation method they have done this uh, Nagar et al. And then HBM2, HBM2 is uh, just second order HBM is done by these people. And then our LH1 and LH2, we are just putting. You can see initial for, for small value, they are similar. It is nothing wrong. Come to, he, come to this point you can see the exact is point uh, 74.69 we are getting second order 74.69 here 74.96 little bit uh, more hbm2 they are getting 76.06 so first order uh, dif difference it is coming lot 76 it is 74 then you can see here it is further it is worse again this is not uh, this is very bad this is also not very good but it is again and you can see here so definitely if you see this methods and all that all together our result is very very close to exact one in comparison to all other methods especially whenever i am con we are considering a second order uh, calculation okay so uh symmetric case uh, just we are just trying to see that uh, we are taking all both the thing cube and fifth order together and you can see that uh, if we see that for different value of a so a is a small means you can see it is good no doubt about it here a is equal to this is displacement curve and from here we are just plotting only error because that is more informative. So here also you see L1 and L8 uh, is to some extent uh, first order and second order LHH is almost going together, but ME is going a very large value of error. It is it is uh, it is A is equal to 10 if you take. You see this is the this is the error actually. Uh, it is not that it is converged here. Again, it will be just repeating this kind of structure. Here it is keep on increasing and then it will be going for this kind of structure actually this for this ME 
error. Error for ME. ME means that uh, variational uh, method uh, that way. So here you can see our result, LHH result is very stable. We are having very, very less uh, error throughout the parameter almost whatever is considered. Just here, that last row, if you just see, this is the ME. So you can just see here, it is the, sorry, it is the 0.4 and here 0 0.0056. So you can see again, 100 times better we are. So just uh, so far, whatever we have studied, symmetric and asymmetric case, we are getting much better results so far with the now, what we have done, this there is no exact calculation possible for this thing. Those things we are actually we were doing exercise, we were wherever some result is there, we are just trying to match it to get confidence with our method. Now, with this confidence, we are venturing to a most general case where uh, at least we didn't get any uh, result from any paper. So, just we are trying to do understand this thing. So, in this case, we are having taking first all uh, one, all parameter one. And we are just plotting potential. You can see here it is single, uh, single well potential we are getting. And for that, as usual, we'll be getting very nice result for this parameter set. Error, if you see, LH2 is very good. LH1, LHH1 is not that good. It is in comparison to that. LH2 is improved. Now, whenever you are taking this parameter, specific this parameter, you are having kind of double well structure. Here, a shallow well will be developed and will be getting a double well structure. And you will be getting error of this kind. So you can see the error is now blue line, if you follow, it is having some kind of you know change here. Now, with this parameter, it is becoming three well. I mean, it's a, you can say triple well, one, two, three. And you will be getting here if it, uh, this kind of error. So, <clears throat> we understand that, okay, complexity of the system, that means potential, if it is becoming very complex, then uh, accuracy will be, we have to compromise with our accuracy. Accuracy will be not that good. Now, phase portrait, if I just see for this kind of potential, so as we told that for this, I'll be getting single well, and you can see it is matching with RK4 for all the cases almost. Now, if we just check that double well thing, so you can see one uh, stable point, another stable point, and here is the unstable point. So you see that some rings, they are matching. Definitely inside this thing, you can see matching inside this thing matching. But whenever it is enveloping both or all three points or two points, then we are much, we are far away from the RK4. So these dotted lines are RK4 and we are just deviating from there. But anyway, some nature, we are getting it here from this calculation also approximate solution also. Similarly, Triple well, if you just consider the same similar thing we are getting, two way we are able to get this phase plot, but it is not matching exactly whatever we are expecting from the RK4. So here outer ring, again, it is just matching, but whenever it is just uh, taking two or three uh, point, uh, then stable around stable point, then we are having this problem. So here we are having this C well, so we'll be having this problem here. So here approximation method is, we have to be cautious about applying this thing. Now, this is one, uh, one uh, study again. Uh, I think I said I, I have some, how much time I can have? Yeah, you can have 10 more minutes. 10 more minutes, okay, I will wind it up very soon. So here you can see that uh, error, RMS error, we are just calculating for different A star value. A star means average value. And we can see the parameter zone, B1 I am just varying. 
V1 variation I'm just doing, other parameter I am kept uh, just constant, some value we have put, and then we are varying it. What is happening? You can see the critical points if we draw, we'll be finding that here, uh, around say uh, here, point three five or uh, five, no, three two or something around that point onward, you will be getting here single well, here uh, double well with one uh, unstable point, and here two stable point and one unstable point. So that uh, that kind of structure, we are getting it from the from the video form. If we just see this way, we can just see. Now you can see one thing: this portion it is it is no problem because this is single well part. This portion, you can see this portion is single well part. So obviously it will be getting less error, more accurate calculation will be doing. Here we are having in between double well, here also double well. So it will be started getting problem. But why it is shooting up this blue line? That is one thing we need to understand. Thing is that if you see here, it is single well. But in this case, we are having, suppose we are just taking 0 0.4, 0 0.04 for this parameter. Right? So you can see 0 0.04 means I am just putting it somewhere here not this well, this is the shallow well it is. And in the shallow well, whenever it is there, it is near that point of instability. So as we understood earlier, when we'll be approaching the point of instability, we'll be getting enormous error. So although amplitude is large here, whenever it is amplitude is large, suppose from here to here that is going, this structure cannot affect is more. This is our interpretation. And, but here, whenever you place it, it will be facing this unstable point. It is in the vicinity of unstable point. That's why it is getting shooted up here. So this is the thing. Now we varied for different, uh, different uh, parameter sets. And all the cases we could uh, give uh, explanation or we could understood with the same way we could understood the uh, nature of the error curves. So this is how I'm just keeping this point. So okay, some slide, let me just, uh, the same variation, it will come. Uh, we are just, uh, we are just uh, keeping it, okay. Then, thing is that uh, we understood why this study we did, basically error, it is not only that case, even, uh, even if you, it is the nature of the parameter, potential parameter. So whenever somebody will be going to deal with such kind of potential, this parameter set, uh, how it will be taken, what kind of uh, nature it will be giving, potential nature or something, that will be understood from this kind of study, definitely. And of course, we could understand the reason of uh, the, uh, or uh, we could describe the, uh, uh, error curves very uh, logically with this. Now, what we did finally, we tried to. There are a lot of homotopy vari variation version. So we tried to just uh, compare with this with the uh, with this thing. Frequency we calculated with considering the turning point actually, and we are just taken that uh, different amplitude. You can see. So you can see here, I need not to mention that the error, HPM alone, if you take, that is this much, 400 almost, 440. If you take with omega square expansion, that will be 41. If it is one by omega expansion, if you take only, that will be giving this one. Now, if you take H also into that, that will be not helping it out here. It is just getting a little bit increased, but in this case, it is decreasing. Here, it is a little bit increased. But LHH, if I do, that is getting very good here again. And LHH2, LH2, if you consider, it is good. And LHH2 also, it is very, very good. So even here, you can see this is 
0.24.42 is the error only. So, whatever so far we have done, we can say confidently that LHH is very accurate and it is having good advantages. It is not that, that complicated. But one thing is with respect to LH, I can just say that LH can be applied for more complex problems where LHH here calculation of H basically is done step by step. First, first order term, suppose you are taking second order term or something. So first, first order term, that means H1, we have to fix it. Then we'll go for the iteration for the, or calculation evaluation of the H2 term. Like that, we have to do it. So calculation is a computational way. It is uh, lengthy in comparison to LH. Not only that, uh, so far, a uh, very complex problem is difficult to, you know, get a uh, good, uh, and, uh, uh, that is probably it will be very difficult. So we have to do something else, something with this. So uh, just uh, one slide I'll flash because very recent work actually, 2020-21, we are in the process of that. Actually, so far we didn't take force uh, oscillator. So this force term, in order to handle these people, they have just took the homotopy plus uh, amplitude expansion. Amplitude expansion they are taking. They have uh, different methods people are doing, but this is one people started. But what we did, we did plain our LH. Plain LH, only thing is that we have just bring uh, it here inside the nonlinear term. And we did, we did this calculation. We means some more calculation we are doing along this line. So here the preliminary result wise, I can just show you that we are much better. Although they are doing a lot of uh, means, uh, other expansion or something, we are still better. And another thing we got that even forced oscillator we can handle with the same footing. We don't have to do anything else. Okay, so uh, with this uh, conclusion, we have already told that we have just generalized way we took some physically relevant potentials and uh, we have got good result for uh, ATHPM. LH, we have improved it to LH and again we got better, far better result we got for LH and that is how we can just conclude it here. Uh, and uh, this part of work is uh, done with uh, Mr. Uh, Hagar Zafania is my PhD student and thank you all for your patience and listening. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So now the forum is open for questions. So questions or suggestions? Yeah, it's a nice presentation, Dr. Sil. Uh, uh, yeah, so I was about to ask how you are going to deal with uh, damped force oscillators uh, like the true, I mean, the thing oscillator. But then in the end, you said that you are also taking force into account. Yes. So, so have you checked for the duffing oscillator? Uh, duffing oscillator, some work we are doing. I can just uh, communicate with you also. Actually, that uh, process is that uh, what we are doing, the uh, damping term, whatever is there. Uh, some preliminary result also, I can, I let me see. Uh, actually, we are taking in that case that uh, damping since it is damping term, damping coefficient part, whatever is there, usually what we do, exponential uh, minus beta t, like that some term we are taking. Beta is the damping coefficient. So in this case, we we, we did it. Actually, we, we that calculation also is going on. We did it recently. Uh, he and et al. They have just done with uh, some enhanced perturbation method or something like that. 
but we did adapted this thing only e to the power that thing in the gauge solution itself yeah. and then if we go we are getting very nice results means uh, uh, yeah. i will i will communicate to you some then later maybe this result yeah but in non linear dynamics uh, the important aspect is to check how bifurcations etc come about so it will be interesting if you can see i mean uh, the kind of solution you may be obtain obtain you are obtaining corresponds to just a limit cycle oscillator with the right. period uh -huh. but then it's more important how for example period doubling occurs mm -hmm. how you can get period 2 oscillation period 4 oscillations etc so then the right. method will be more useful i also wanted to ask you there are other kinds of systems called non standard lagrangian or non standard hamiltonian systems mm -hmm. so it's a linear oscillator yes you, you have exact we have exact solutions we have uh, published several papers on, on that kind of oscillators so you can check whether those solutions how your method gives rise to uh, or compares with mm -hmm. the exact solution Okay. okay sir okay sir. so there the frequency doesn't change but the form of the solution uh, depends on the amplitude and so on so a very interesting class of solutions come about uh -huh. so you you can try to check um, okay sir how your method gets applied and there are also other kinds of linear oscillators where you cannot try explicit exact solution but they are uh, what we call integrable systems mm -hmm. in those systems we can find the interesting solutions that would be useful okay yeah you okay. can try for those kind of models okay sir and then there would be a question how you will handle coupled oscillators hmm so how you will get uh, even basic periodic solutions so on, say coupled doping oscillator coupled van der poel oscillators and so hmm so those are the interesting problems which one would like to investigate so you can try to extend your method to those class of uh, oscillators yeah. okay sir okay sir yeah we'll do we'll okay. do sir okay thanks thank you sir thank you very much for your this is a uh, uh, very valuable suggestion i will definitely follow it up and i will uh, communicate with you okay thank you thanks uh, any, any other question um i'm not seeing any questions uh, in the chat box okay if not uh, <laughs> um the students may be a bit hesitant to ask uh, maybe they may be write to you by email okay okay no problem uh, no problem yeah. um so since there are no more questions uh, let us conclude the sessions uh, so i conclude this session by thanking professor tapasil by accepting our invitation and giving a very eliminating talk on uh, the numerical uh, homotopy balance but thank you sir thank you thank for thank you, thank you very much and uh, definitely anybody even say anybody interested can just communicate over uh, to email i'll be definitely in touch so sure. i'll be just reverting back uh, yeah i encourage the student to write to you thank you sir thank you very much once again for inviting me thank you Shall I shall I quit? Yes, 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 sir. Yes.